welcome here. One of the things I was interested to note is as the slide changed from the health authorities, uh, the last one that presented had a land area of 16,000 um, kilometers and we're at 210,000. So that kind of speaks to the scope of the area that Interior Health covers in their Interior Health program, which also then speaks a little bit to why we're looking at, at uh, the areas that we're looking at. So when we looked at advanced care planning, we know that advanced care planning is something that is essential that we do with our renal population. And we know that as people move through the uh, disease progression, this is something that we have to do. And what we realized is that throughout our program, and uh, there was a variety of different approaches to it. There was a variety of different levels of, of programs, um, people that had been consulted in that program. But we know that everybody in the team is done. We know that various teams had different times that they would discuss. They would have different tools that they would use. There'd be different ways to have the conversations and the document differently. And so that was always a, a bit of a challenge. So we looked at what did we want to do as a health authority to standardize that approach. So the purpose of the project was to look at how do we ensure that every dialysis patient within our health authority has the same access to advanced care planning, the same way of documentation, and the same communication across our, our program. And initially we thought that we would be looking at a project that involved every member of the healthcare team. And yes, every member of the healthcare team is involved in those advanced care planning discussions, um, but we really then came down to focus on uh, the social, uh, how social workers fit in and uh, were involved in that. So we started our project in four phases. And so in phase one, we did developmental, um, was the developmental uh, process. We did some environmental scans, we gathered all the data, we started building the foundation for we where we wanted to go in the next while. And so with that, we also developed the project charter. And through that process, we also hired a uh, project coordinator so that there was somebody dedicated to this. In phase two of the project, uh, we went through establishing pilot sites. And we'll look a little bit about that in a, in a slide coming up. We looked at some of the process and the documentation pieces. We started development. There were site visits. Phase three is where we're at now, and so in September we started launching an education program. And so that education is going on now with the region-wide implementation. So it's starting to, it's kind of like you see something building and growing, and now you're starting to see it coming together, and it's quite exciting. And then in phase four, which will come up into the winter, uh, come up into the winter, we'll be doing the evaluation phase. So when we go back to the beginning, one of the things that happened at the same time was that Interior Health launched um, a series of electronic learning modules. And so with that e-learning module, there was a, two modules that were launched, and one was called Introduction to Advanced Care Planning. And this isn't renal specific, but it is one of the tools that we have introduced within our renal program. And so the Introduction to Advanced Care Planning is a broad introductory program for anybody that works in interior health that addresses what is advanced care planning, how do we do it, what does it look like. And then there was also a separate e-learning module on using the spoken framework. So that's using a, a standard approach for addressing that, uh, the topic of advanced care planning with clients. And it was a good starting place so that we had everybody on the same basic foundation as we moved forward. Then we looked at our pilot sites, and from the slides you can see, five sites were, were um, targeted in our pilot. And we used a bit of a staggered approach, because you've seen the, the vast geographical uh, distance that we have, and we had one project coordinator that was working on that. So we looked at a range, because our, our clients come through a whole continuum of care. So we had five sites. So the Penticton Kidney Care Clinic, the Kelowna PD Clinic, the Rutland Community Dialysis Unit, Kamloops Kidney Care, and then the train hum Trail Hemodialysis Unit. So from that scope, you can see we covered from people coming into a kidney care clinic through to a hemodialysis, community-based, hospital-based in-center, so that the, the tools and development and the documents that we developed 
word to be transferable across the whole health authority. And that it kind of spread throughout the whole program over that time of the um, initial assessment. With any improvement, we were using the standard PDSA quality improvement model. And so with that, we looked at, we, we, we had done that gathering of the data. Where do we start? Where are we at? What do we want to do? And then we started with the, how are we going to do that? And the development of tools and documents and resources. A lot of team meetings. Interestingly enough, Carla and I are, are co-presenting. We'd never met. We had talked on the phone. We've never met each other. The health authority is, is big enough that we had never met, but we're doing this work together. Um, and it, it does speak to the ability of, of what we have now as far as some of our, our electronic resources to do that. As we moved forward, we had a number of uh, versions of a lot of things, and which is always a bit of a challenge. Which is the most com current version? Where are we at with that? Are we using this? Have we changed this letter? I think that's a different letter, so we've gone through all of that. And at the end of it, and through that PDSA cycle, we looked at, and then we have developed, we've looked at a priority indicator system. We have looked at our green sleeves, and uh, Carla will show you a bit more about that. Uh, we have full-size green sleeves that go in patient charts. We've got mini green sleeves that look like a billfold for people to take with them. We had multiple versions of the letters to the GPs and the communication tool, because our, our patients are not our patients in isolation. Our patients are our patients in context of their bigger of their bigger existence. So letters to the GP in communication. We looked at the use of the My Voice. Um, we looked at a think talk plan format. At the same time, Interior Health was introducing the most format, the medical orders for scope of treatment. And that fit into this very well. And then we looked at the advanced care planning tracking document. If you've had a conversation, if people have, are in that decision process, where are they at? Who is the keeper of that knowledge? And for the other clinicians and people that are interacting with them, where do we need to go to follow forward? So I'm gonna kind of hand over to Carla and she's going to then go on more about the ACP process. So with the advanced care planning process, um, some planning went, went into everything, of course. Um, so the unit clerks would prepare the advanced care planning packages. Um, the renal nurse and nephrologist would um, use the priority indicator tool, which I'll show you on the next slide, I believe. Um, and really it shows whether or not um, the individual, depending on where they're at with their kidney disease, um, how high of a priority they are to complete the advanced care plan. Um, it was recommended through the project that the social work would meet with the individual three times um, just for the purpose of timing and getting the program launched. Um, the nephrologist would um, complete a prognostic talk with the individual so that they were um, understanding of where they were health-wise. So the patient would then complete the advanced care plan, um, but then again, it's a self or um, self-determined project. So if they didn't want to complete it or that was fine as well, but they would complete the advanced care plan. We would put the information into the green sleeves in the chart, give a copy to the patient for their mini green sleeve, and then we would communicate that information to the general practitioner as well so that they were, everybody was clear with that person's care plan. So the social work documentation is really important because we were documenting in Meditech, we still are, um, and as well as in Promise. Um, and then again, making sure that it's documented in the green sleeve and with the GP. So on the next slide here, you see the uh, priority indicator tool. It's a series of six questions, and if you answer all six questions, that means that you are a high priority for, for completing the project. Um, the, the letter to the, in the middle is the sample letter that we send out to the general practitioner. Um, we can do that in advance as well and let the GP know that they've scored high on the priority indicator and we basically ask the general practitioner if they would like to complete the advanced care planning project or if they would like the renal clinic to complete it with the patient. 
so far we've had an overwhelming response from the GPs to go ahead from a renal unit perspective and complete the advanced care plan. Um, and so we're fine doing that. Um, and then as you see on the right hand side, you see a big green sleeve. The mini green sleeve fits in a purse or a pocket. Um, the My Voice document that we give to the patient and then the one at the bottom there is basically what the unit clerks are providing for us to use. So some of the challenges with the project were the workload for the social workers, um, and that's being looked at site by site. Um, workload for the unit clerks as well. So change, of course. Um, some programs took the project personally as a challenge to their current practice, um, but for the reasons that the environment scan found, it is creating the consistent process overall throughout the province. So some people um, wonder with the new most form coming out, the medical orders for scope of treatment, whether or not advanced care planning is necessary. And I still think personally that yes, um, because the most document is very um, medical and the advanced care planning can add personal touches that wouldn't necessarily be discussed by completing the most form. And then of, co of course, um, communication among all of the health authorities and the, the stakeholders that were involved with the planning. Um, there is some communication um, that's still being worked out and just making sure that all stakeholders have all of the information that they need to carry out the project so that it is consistent among everyone. And I'm going to pass it over back to Lois for this evaluation process. Um, so we're actually just running out of time, so I'm just going to be quick. So we're not done yet. So when we are done, we will have an evaluation process. We will look at, we know where we were at when we started, about numbers of ACP and the involvement. So then when we're done, we will look at uh, where are we at. And the plot project does close in December, so that'll be good. And then we have time for questions. Any questions from the audience? Dr. Carson. Another cause very near and dear to my heart. Um, so this is really impressive. Um, I'm curious about how you communicated back and forth with family doctor offices. Mm -hmm. Did I did I miss that in the middle? Yep. No. So uh, what I do is I send the letter ahead of time if we know that they've scored high on the priority, and we ask the GP if they would like to do the process or not. So then they they just send us a letter back. Yeah, go ahead. Or no, we'll take it from here. And then we're still trying to figure out how long we'll wait to contact the general practitioner to get that information once they've completed it. But for us, if we've been asked to complete the advanced care planning, then what we do is um, we'll send the, the information back to the GP by fax. But if we've started the conversation without sending out that information, because sometimes patients will come in and say, I've heard about this how do I get started? And so we'll initiate that conversation and go through that with them. So we have another letter that's been drafted that we send to the, to the doctor saying, um, we've initiated the conversation and as we get information, we'll send it to you, but we still give them that opportunity to take it from there if they want. Um, but generally, it's, we just fax the information or we'll phone and say we've completed it and just making sure that they have copies of it. Actually, more what I was wondering is, oh, sorry. It, it, no, no, that's that's helpful. What I'm given that advanced care planning is an ongoing process. It's sort of just a there are many points around the patient at which it might happen. The, the ongoing communication back and forth. So rather than a we started it, have you done it already? It's actually even oh it changed this month. Oh it changed again in the GP's office, they came back to Kidney Claire, it changed again, they went back to the GP, it changed so again. It's it, that ongoing back it is, and forth. It is, and it does go back and forth. And so it's, some, it's a little bit dependent on what where they are in their stage. Um, at the end, I know in Penticton is what I can speak to, when they do the kidney care clinics, if at the end of the clinic, a note will go back to, from every clinic, goes back to the GP. And so that they know what happened there. In the in-center hemo, there's that constant back and forth. Um, and part and so that it is depending on the, the thing it's either phone call or letter but it is an ongoing feedback back and forth between the nephrology clinicians and the family physician okay. yeah I mean because that's something we struggle with on the island is sort of mm -hmm. the back it's actually getting info back from the family doc and it, we're struggling with the electronic mm -hmm. ways to do that so I think mm -hmm. it's something that's 
And I'm always curious about how other programs are, if you've yeah. been able to engage the family docs to yeah. send you information rather there's, than just sending There's family. a very active shared care network in the South Okanagan between the family practice and nephrology and, and, and all the specialists. And that is a, an area that they've worked on developing that back and forth communication very well. In a smaller site like Penticton, you will usually see the GP walking down the hall, having a beer at the winery, whatever. And <laughs> lots of conversations happen in creative areas. Great. Yes. It is Okanagan Wine Festival, so we, you know. cooperation between the multiple sites. It's, it's an interesting model, and I think we can all really learn from that. So thank you very much. Okay, one more question. Oh, excuse me. Bobby from Fraser Health, and I think that you had actually our Fraser Health Regional Advanced Care Planning Coordinator come in and begin to help you roll this out in interior health, Carrie Hoffman. So it is great to see this growth, et cetera. The one question I had was something was said about if we have a most, do we have advanced care planning? And I guess one of the philosophies that is, is ours within Fraser Health is that there's actually two processes, two processes going on, and the advanced care planning piece of the process, the patient-driven piece of the process, is things from public policy, such as from the Representation Act, et cetera, and that's their values discussion, et cetera, and then you're your orders that come for your physician, and we're starting to call them more medical orders of scope of practice, being based on or a marriage between these two processes. And so I would really, really hope that these, that the, that the, medical, the medical piece is so important. We, can, we can't have these patients in treatment and at risk without having orders and how to respond, but just um, want to really be sure that the need for medical orders isn't driving the advanced care planning process and that when that we're talking about the questions. standardized, yeah, yeah is, is incrementally and yeah. readiness for the patient to have a really thoughtful conversation so that those yeah. orders are really reflective of, of an understanding from the patient. And one of the things we have is that the most is actually scanned and entered onto our electronic record. So with Meditech, anybody admitted to the hospital, the most is scanned and, and entered onto Meditech. The green sleeves and the advanced care planning documents are, are housed within renal. So they are, they are different. And that was one of the questions that came up is, if we have most, do we need this? And I, Carla, very clearly, yes, we do. It's very different. And they serve different tools. And so part of it was the education for the acute care units that our renal patients have these green sleeves. If they are admitted, we will bring them to you. We will discuss what their advanced care plan is with you.